Okay, so I want to open up this, the Surface Laptop Studio 2. And in order to do so, I'm going to be following the instructions from the original Surface Laptop Studio, which I took apart many times. What I have here to help us out is a soft microfiber cloth that we can rest it on. I have an iFixit toolkit, which should come in handy, uh, particularly spudgers, guitar picks, not to mention the Torx bits. I also have here a P3 Plus from Crucial. It's a four terabyte drive, so I'll be updating my one terabyte 4060 Surface Laptop Studio to a four terabyte SSD. Now this is PCIe 4. I did test the SSD inside the Laptop Studio and it peaks at about, uh, I believe, uh, 5,500 uh, megabytes a second. So this is slightly slower, but that's still very fast. And uh, this is a power, fairly power efficient uh, model, which is good because with four terabyte chips on there, it may use a little bit more power, but the fact that it's maybe a little slower, it, I'm not sure. Hopefully it's sixes and the battery life is not affected by performing this upgrade. But yes, we will be moving to a four terabyte. At the same time, uh, you don't need to do this, but I will be installing a sticker kit to protect the surfaces. Um, so I'm gonna be doing all that. So we'll be able to take a look at the insides of the Surface Laptop Studio 2 and uh, see how the cooling differs and what it looks like on the inside of this thing. So the first step to doing so is powering off the device. And then uh, we're going to be lifting up these feet. They're long sticker strips. And I do find, at least on the, the old version, they were easy to get to come up. In fact, you can follow that guide as well, hopefully, unless there's something different here. They were easier to come up when brand new than they were uh, after they'd sat for a long time but I am, <laughs> maybe it's just the, the glue, there we go. Okay. Okay, so it looks like these are slightly different. There is a black material under here which is probably part of the sticker so you'll want to try to keep that together as best you can I didn't do the best job there but I was unfamiliar that with that being the case but I think we're still in pretty good shape Okay, so with that pulled up like that, we still have the little tabs to know where to put it back in. And I'm gonna set that to the side so I can reuse them and do the same. I'm just gonna flip it around. Do the same thing on this side, this edge. And there we go. If you know that black piece is there, it's a little bit easier to <laughs> get a handle on it. Set that to the side. Now we have exposed our screws and we're going to use a Torx bit. And test and see which one it is. Yep, 
Yeah, it's a Torx T3. And you want to be extremely careful with these. There are four on one side and three on the other. Okay, once all the Torx bits are taken out, the next step is to pull up these stickers that exist on either side. I'm seeing zero screws now, uh, so this is different. This is different from the original laptop studio. No, it's magnetic. It is now magnetic. Okay, I'm going to push this back down because it does not... It does not need to come up. That is actually amazing. Uh, that is that is the learning experience that we needed for this device because uh, there are no screws on either side. After I'm sure after uh, Linus Tech Tips broke that, they decided they weren't going to do that again. And uh, this thing is now magnetic, so I'm going to gently pull it up and see what happens. Now it is still attached near the trackpad. So I'm just going to clear the tape near the trackpad. Gently, gently get through this. I don't know what's underneath here, so I'm just taking my time. Again, we don't have any I don't think there's any repair manuals up yet on this. So I really hope I don't do anything stupid here, but better I do something stupid than you do something stupid. I'm gonna leave that pick under there and pick it this side a little bit. Okay, back is off. Now be very careful because I believe there's still a connector on here. Yep, there still is. You still have uh, the battery that it's on the back of this. And let's get a better shot in here of what's going on. Now you can see, I'm seeing some copper heat pipes here. This is thicker, these fans are thicker. Um, and the whole new touchpad uh, that they have designed for this device is right there and looking pretty interesting. So, wow, I, we still have the 20, <clears throat> 2230 capability on the SSD, I'm seeing that little adapter that could go there. Obviously this is the one terabyte and it is a full size. Um, so yeah, that is the inside of the Surface Laptop Studio. It does look way more refined. So very interesting there. I'm gonna pause this while I get the new SSD ready and we'll go from there. Okay, so the Surface Laptop studio original when you disconnected these screws it also disconnected the power there was no need to disconnect the power is what the documentation said I'm going to assume that is the same on this model so I'm going to remove these two screws and I'm going to remove the SSD there it is right there. It is kind of repackaged. We have a 
Ooh, we have some cooling on there that actually connects it to a little cool plate down there. So that's interesting. And whether this can be opened remains to be seen. Okay, so looking at this, it really doesn't seem like this can be can be opened. And I say that because if you look at the metal right here, you can see that the metal casing that's attached to the PCB of the SSD is actually adjoined with this metal and this tab right here is also affixed. It is literally mini spot welded onto the SSD. Now I'm hoping that that is not a conductor that's going to tell it if it's connected or not and won't let us use proprietary SSDs. I don't think that should be the case. That'd be a big find if it was. So I guess we'll find out. But uh, yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you can pull this shielding off very easily at all to try to uh, replace it. It's just. It's just that well sealed. Okay, so we are going to pull off the pad. I'm going to stick it down where it was. And we're going to insert the replacement SSD. And that does still line up. And you want to be sure to screw the screw back in to place on the motherboard that we took out. Just for safekeeping. And this same screw should affix the new SSD into place. Now, theoretically, you know, as I'm saying, the fact that the casing on this SSD is not bridging these two screws could potentially let Microsoft know that you've ever replaced the SSD. Uh, so there is that. I don't think that will be the case, but we have the SSD installed and I'm going to seal this back up. But this has been a look at the Surface Laptop Studio 2 with more beefy cooling. You can see it's got some packaging all around this thing. Man, this is like... This is just packaged so nicely. You can see that the chips are actually on the underside of the board, which is interesting, but it keeps all that heat on the top and by the heat pipes that are gonna pull it all the way down and then exhaust out the front of, of this device. So really cool. It makes it so the heat doesn't accumulate uh, down in the bottom uh, where the battery is and the backside of it won't get super hot because of because of those things. So really, really, I, I'm loving seeing the, these copper heat pipes come down. Uh, because that is just a way beefier and we saw it in my in my throttling video this thing can go all day long at 80 watts on the gpu so really exciting but i'm going to seal it up make sure the ssd works and confirm that at the end of this video okay so i am able to confirm that the system registers <laughs> the new ssd no issues there uh, despite the interesting looking tabs uh, that hold everything down so really not an issue I just upgraded this to a 4 terabyte Surface Laptop Studio 2. Good to go.